think all of you know who I am, but maybe not. Um, Randy Stam. I'm with Idaho State University. And uh, I am the e-learning coordinator, which is a bit ambiguous as far as the title is concerned. I help support the uh, faculty on our campus with technology, and not just e-learning, but also classroom technologies, software technologies, and we're involved in training and supporting the faculty with that. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, quick overview. These are some of the areas that we're going to look at. LMS Analytics, and I hope not to bore you too much. So to start out, we've all heard the term data mining, and this is a, a definition, so really of collecting the data, getting it into a, a form to report so that we can analyze it. And, uh, and so the definition of academic analytics adds the uh, next portion of this, which is really important, and I think this is where we're going with the data that we're collecting, especially for LMSs, is this next, the predict, act, and the refine. So now that we have this data, and we've been collecting this data, and most of us have all this data, the problem is, is what are we doing with it, and are we using it to our advantage? And this is really what this presentation is about. So what, what should we be doing? What should we be thinking ahead in the future? Uh, and everyone looks probably at the, uh, the newest Horizons report. And uh, they've mentioned that analytics is something that institutions are going to be involved in four to five years down the road. Well, there are some right now. The, the bigger question is, is there enough research to back up in the uh, part of predicting and acting? And, uh, and matter of fact, my dissertation I'm working on my doctorate, is going to look at analytics for an LMS and see how, it how we can interpret it to find at-risk students. So those students that are struggling, and when I say at-risk, that's, that's an open-ended type uh, item too. What does it mean? And uh, in my case, I'm looking at uh, those that are not performing well. And what can we do to help them uh, perform better? <laughs> Um, then there's a, a definition for learning analytics, which kind of combines all these different other definitions. <clears throat> Excuse me, business uh, intelligence and web analytics. Web analytics is more like the uh, Google type of analytics. Uh, we already talked about academic analytics, uh, educational data mining, and then the action analytics, which is okay if if we collect this data and we've uh, we've identified what we want to do with it, what action are we taking and, and who's taking that action? Is it the institution? Is it the instructor? Is it the student that's taking that action based on the data and how it's being reported? Okay, so I thought this was an in interesting quote I pulled out of Educause uh, in one of their white papers that they had and, uh, and concerns maybe that we have with uh, profiling students. But at the same point, we can't really not profile them if, we'd, if we are, we're not responsible enough to help them if they're struggling. And retention is big, and I think it's a big topic in, in any school. What can we do to help those students along? So theoretically, look at faculty. So how would they use it? Well. Again, I, I identified the at-risk students again. Um, assessment measures. And some of the tools we'll look at, too, they have the, uh, the social aspects. So how are they engaging with other students? How are they engaging with the instructor? Uh, how are they engaging with other people outside of the institution? And data and how we can collect it and interpret that, too. Uh, participation and attendance. How much time are they spending in the course? Uh, what activities have they looked at, and so on. And a lot of the LMSs already collect the log data for that. It's the interpretation of that data that's, that's really important. It takes us kind of to the next level. Uh, graded activities is the other thing. And then the evaluation of the course. And I put in there <coughs> formative and summative in the sense that can we correct those things as we go along 
throughout the course to adjust to our students or to adjust to the topics and so on so that we can uh, collect data and, and make those changes. Um, so, and then really ta tailoring that instruction. I think that's important too. Um, let's go to the next item. And then let's take it the student's pers perspective now. So, what can we do with that data? Well, we can motivate, motivate those students, correct and improve uh, problems that may occur with those students. And, uh, you know, we're identifying the strengths and weaknesses. And the other thing is finding resources for them if they have problems. So can we send them to a tutor or a tutoring, like an online uh, writing lab or something in that sense to help them correct some of the problems that they're having? That or they need technology support. Do we have resources for that? Or um, are they getting, um, or are they just not participating in the in the areas or reading their textbook and so on and just finding ways to help improve that process. Um, and study habits. So um, helping them understand that, you know, you can't just go in and navigate in the course and see what the topics are and click on one topic and spend two minutes on a particular item. You're not getting anywhere with it. Um, and so in a sense, they're, they're seeking new ways of learning and can this data and this reporting help them do that? And then from the institutional level, um, and just, and it goes back to the retention, which I already mentioned, and resources for accreditation. Um, you're looking at uh, how do we identify support services to help those students? And then also with our class offerings, we can determine a lot of what we're offering and what we should be offering with our courses. Okay. Some of the LMS analytic tools, I, I just threw a list out here, and some of them have interesting names. Some are specific to social networks, um, and, uh, and they're looking at grade performance. The Signals one I have a video for, it's, it's really interesting what Purdue's doing. Um, some of them are. Well, see, like the social network, uh, the SNAP tool, is a browser-based tool. So I go to my forum posts. I've installed the software that's basically an add-on to my browser. And it'll run a report and uses a, a Java app, basically, and generates all the data and reporting functions for that to tell me, well, the social networks of that particular discussion tool and it'll give me a chart, and I'll, I'll show it here in a second. But then it shows the individual networks, too, the, the ego networks that they call of that student and how they've connected with either the instructor or other students, and they've engaged in the environment. Um, and then there are some uh, commercial-type uh, ones in here, like the grade performance status and the uh, signal ones. Uh, those are both uh, institutional developed. Um, Starfish, I don't know if anybody's heard of this one. Yeah, it's something that uh, somebody from Blackboard, I think, developed. And, and uh, I know there are quite a few institutions using it, and I know K-12 type institutions are using this. So it's, yeah, and this is just a short list of ones that I've put on here. The reason I put on a couple of these is because they're ones that we're looking at and I'm going to be using as part of my research is this gizmo one, which is really specific to monitoring by the instructor. And the, uh, oh, where's the other one? Oh, the individual learning planning one is for these students. So they're really giving them a report and allowing them to kind of uh, react to how they're doing within their course. So, yeah, go ahead. Some of them are free and some of them are, are commercial paid type uh, tools. And so the two that I'm looking at are both uh, open source and contributed type modules through the Moodle community. And so they're really easy just to, to connect to our Moodle instance and then uh, we can start running reports on the data that we have. This is on the uh, Purdue Signals program. This will give you an idea as far as what they're doing, and hopefully this will be loud enough for you.
school. This is Elliot Hall. This is tuition as much as $37,000 a year. With so much at stake, Purdue is committed to helping students manage their rigorous courses and their time. The result? 86% of freshmen make it to their second year. But Purdue wants more. We wouldn't be true to our mission if we were not concerned with making sure that we serve the students well, making sure they finish. Retaining students, especially beyond the first year, is a national concern. A recent study shows that 34% of all college freshmen did not return to the same institution for their sophomore year. It's the highest percentage of students who opted out or failed to make the grade in 20 years. This fall, Purdue has something new to help incoming freshmen and sophomores at a cost to the university of $47 per student. It's called Signals, a first-of-its-kind computerized course management system that not only charts quizzes and exams, but also student effort in the most difficult classes. Signals can take into account practice quiz outcomes. It can take into account number of times students log in to chat groups for the course. It can take into account number of times students look at the homework. Instructors use the information to track students' progress. Similar to a traffic light, green, yellow, or red pops up on a student's computer or cell phone. They get a signal within the first two weeks of classes before bad study habits develop. Tyler Gentry was one of 2,000 students in the pilot program. In this case, the signal was yellow, and it says, caution, you can do better in this class. His math grade went from C to B. Once I saw it, it bumped into the yellow. So that kind of gives you an idea as far as how it's being used, and it's, it's pretty exciting because it, it's, a, it's a motivator for the students to see that, and then they have an opportunity to act on things. And uh, one, the individual uh, student planner, that the other tool that, that I was looking at for Moodle, does something very similar to that um, with the, uh, the uh, signal type stoplight to let them know how they're doing. But what happens is that the instructor has to go in there and determine what level they are and then determine the, uh, the exact uh, plan of action for that student. Where this is kind of automated, they'll go in and, and based on, on um, uh, whatever requirements they have within the course, they'll set it automatically so that this, this is automated for the student itself. That is not. That's something that Purdue put together. And they're selling, aren't they? Yes, they are, on, off their site. And, and $47 a student, but, you know. So that's how much they're selling it for, or that's how much it costs them to develop? I think that's how much it costs them to, uh, to make it available to their students, yeah. And they develop it themselves? Well, yes, but I think they had help through uh, Blackboard to do it. So I think there was some cost involved there, too, to modify it. Well, I, th we'd have to go to their site. I can't remember now. <laughs> exactly. OK. So. Let's go to the next item here. Come on. Here's another one. Um, grade performance uh, status, the GPS. And uh, there's a pretty decent video on this one, too, to give you an idea of how another tool is being used at an institution. And this is at Northern Arizona. Awesome. 
struggling here, here's a post of ideas for help you. The way it works is a faculty member has a list of students in the class. Instead of having to look up an email address, they click on a symbol next to a student's name, and they choose one of five different categories related to academic performance. This feedback happens at three points during the semester, and these are three critical decision-making points for students in the semester. Um, students will receive this feedback, and um, the instructors are able to choose positive feedback, feedback on attendance, feedback on grades, on academics, and it also provides information on resources that will help the student with academic progress. GPS is part of a larger trend nationwide, where universities are looking for methods to increase retention by opening more avenues of communication. So it's really trying to increase that dialogue between a faculty member and a student. So that's the main help that the student would receive is that they'd be getting really concrete, good feedback from their faculty member um, through the email. And that hopefully will then generate maybe more conversations and more connections with the faculty member that they're attending course with. Along with the feedback on performance in a class, the GPS system offers an easy way for a professor to suggest resources at Northern Arizona University, like introducing a student to the campus writing center or sending a link on time management skills for an upcoming project. And there's another benefit to the great performance system, that every email that the faculty member sends out to the student automatically gets copied into something that the advisors have access to in an electronic file that students have. So that if I were to meet with a student prior to that meeting, I can see that file, and I could actually then see all the different communications that that student had received, whether they were positive or concerning. So then I could actually help generate, depending on what the situation more information that we never would have had access to before. And unlike similar programs, GPS is completely electronic, saving a lot of paper. Early indications are encouraging, suggesting students are finding success through the program. Students use GPS to manage their future grades. So when they receive these updated emails through the system, what they'll be able to do is really look at their progress, look at their academic progress in the course, and then make decisions on what to do based on the feedback from their instructors. And it's a way for them to get those resources that they need here at the university. While GPS was two years in the making, faculty and students are just starting to use it, with about 200 faculty members communicating with more than 3,600 students who themselves are saying it's a good program. I think that GPS is a great way to track your grades. So uh, definitely helps students to get on stuff. So I know it's easy to uh, GPS is in its pilot year, and the Gateway Student Success Center is soliciting feedback from the university population looking for ways to improve the system. Northern Arizona University's GPS program is expected to grow in the year ahead. So that gives you an idea of another type of tool that Northern Arizona is using. Oh, good. Is there is there follow up to all that too? Right. Yeah. So this is uh, an example of the uh, social networking tool, the SNAP tool. And uh, this is a typical Moodle uh, discussion forum. And this works with any LMS, this particular tool, because it's browser-based. Browser it basically looks at a uh, discussion forum, a threaded discussion, and it'll go through and take a snapshot of that page give you some data that looks like this. And so here's your 
your social network that's developed through that forum discussion. It'll tell you up in the right-hand corner the number of participants, uh, number of posts, and, uh, and then you can go ahead and determine the ego net networks for the individual students and how many uh, responses and uh, messages sent back and forth. And the instructor's listed there too, but it just shows up as another name here. So there's probably a lot of activity in this particular area. But you can split all that apart. And uh, let me go to the next one. And so now I can look at number of posts. I can also export or download that data. And if I wanted to pull a spreadsheet and I wanted to run more statistics on that, I could do that. And um, so it's kind of a cool tool. Um, Dawson, the, uh, the originator of this, did quite a bit of research in uh, forum discussions and uh, had some really interesting uh, information, which you would think the you know, number of posts, number of activity, the number of characters within their posts, and so on, those would be the high-end students, and, and those students would probably be performing better. So he based it on performance. And, uh, and you would think that the instructors would be looking at those students that probably are not performing as well. And what he found was that faculty actually had more contact with the students that did more in the course and performed better than the students that did not perform as well which you think you'd want the instructor to go in and, and help those other people along, and that wasn't the case. Um, and, uh, Randy, sorry. yeah. So each student has to load this, this add-on to the browser? Nope. It's all instructor-based. It's all so, instructor-based? Yeah. So where do they put this? Where do, how do they load it? They, they download it, and it's installed as a plug-in within their browser. Okay? okay. And so... Yeah, and so when I go to my discussion forum, I go ahead and I, I click on that particular uh, tool, which basically sends it to a website, and then embeds within that page, within that discussion forum, which is really not part of the LMS now. It's just another page that it's created that looks like it with a, a Java applet at the bottom with all this data in it that you're seeing here. So this is really the bottom of that discussion forum now. It just added that content to the, to the bottom part of that. And so it's, it's pretty neat. Um, the, the other thing too is that, the, go ahead. Right, so the, 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 qual, the qualitative part of it, you know, is, is the data of quality to say based on whatever rubric or whatever they're they were supposed to respond to. So there's that qualitative portion of this too that you need to look at. Yeah, and so it's that would also the, it does take into account it sounds like anything other than their discussion board posts. So there there's some predictive value in, in saying folks who are more active in the course tend to do better, but right. then also you could say, well there are sometimes students who maybe in the discussion board a lot but bomb their homework and quizzes and so forth. So Exactly. Well, and here's the other thing too. You're, they really looked at the study. Really looked at you know low populated classes. You know, you're looking at 10, 20 students in a class, and you know where you want to really find uh, you know find those students that maybe not be performing as well. And for retention purposes, you really want to look at those gateway courses, those courses that have high populations in them. And uh, would this particular tool allow for that? Well, yeah, for discussion forums, maybe if they're using it, how are they using it? Are they just getting, you know, getting a, a participation grade, or is there a real assessment attached to it? And so. Yes, it's just just not that one thing. I've been teaching educational technology class for the last year, and. Uh, it's been funny, I have an introduction, it's a like hybrid course, it's, I have an introduction discussion board, introduce yourself discussion board at the beginning of every semester. And it's funny to see how, how much their, not quality, but the quantity that they provide with that first discussion board, how, how much 
much it correlates with their final grade in the course. Mm. Just how much effort they put into introducing themselves and showing that involvement from the very beginning. How I already can identify real quickly who's going to be my people struggling. Because I tell them, I tell them in the instructions, I tell them, write as much as you want. It, it, like I don't put <laughs> parameters saying write, write this much. And I just give them, for this specific time, I just give them points for contributing. I mean, it could be a one sentence introduction if I want to, but you can quickly identify who's here to actually work and to learn and who's not. Yeah. yeah, and that's what that's right. the, the tools that I think are going to do this best are going to be the tools that have some research behind the sort of their predictive modeling or whatever, so that you don't have, I mean, it's one thing to be able to say, I think it's a snapshot of where you're currently at in the course, and be able to say your grades are bad. I mean, the, that, the grade book is like that, right? Yeah. Um, but if you're able to look and you say, kind of based on certain things that we can see going on, I can predict that down the road your grades are gonna be bad, that's where you really need to be the intervention. <coughs> yeah. And you know, and the other part of that too is how many times have they communicated with the other students within there? Mm -hmm. So the, the social aspect to all that too. You know, if I'm just going in there and posting something and, and telling you all about myself, and it, it may be of quality to say, but uh, if I'm not engaging with the other students, am I getting anything out of the class or that particular activity too? Yeah, and, and that's another thing I do. Okay, so it's a little social experiment to introduce yourself. They think they really are just introducing themselves, but I'm analyzing some other things, and, and I don't. For this one, I don't put requirements that you have to go comment on anyone else's if they're writing introductions. But, but you see a few of them do, and you know who your top-notch students are real quickly. Yeah, definitely. I would, I would think so. Um, uh, here's I'm just curious if you actually like, done statistics of analyzing kind of criteria of their you know introductory posts and sort of statistically correlating that with the final um, I haven't. I should run a couple of emails. Also, I went to prior experience online, too. Yeah. yeah. They teach online. There's a lot of other variables. Like, yeah, I, yeah, I just said, to put a bug in your ear, I mean, as you said that correlation, I was kind of like, that's really kind of interesting. And if you statistically proved it, I think you'd have something published. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, and there needs to be more of that. And that's a whole reason for this presentation, yeah. is that, yeah. Something you know. Something I do in my course, though, is our, our LMS allows us to, it provides us several different la layers of information. It provides us where did they visit, what order did they visit things, how much time did they spend on things. Um, it quickly alerts you if you have this many people missing an assignment within this much due time of the due date and this many people have flunked it and so on. So there's lots of notifications that you can get alerted on. Mm -hmm. And we're just trying to build into it the, uh, the understanding of all right, so where is the threshold? And, and that's when we need to write some of these reports so that we get notified like they, they're not doing well on this one specific thing. This is and whether we automatically generate an email that gets sent out to the person or you, you need to have that trigger. Yeah. Yeah. I was just almost suggesting, you know, I mean, if there's one thing to sort of know this so that you can improve the learning of your students, and that's probably the most important thing. But don't miss an opportunity to publish something. This gizmo tool is one of the tools that I'm looking at in Moodle, and it's a tool identi uh, specifically identified for faculty, and it also has a, a tutoring function in it, too. So if you wanted a tutor to be part of that process to help those students along that are struggling, you can add them in through this particular tool, and they can kind of manage all this, too. But it'll go through, and I just picked a class and, and ran a report on it, and then I just identified an individual and then it, it's really hard to see with this particular screen. But there are boxes all the way through here. And they are, they're all the same color. But the lighter the color, the less activity there, there is within that particular, either it's an activity or it's a particular document or, or resource that's in that, in that course. And so it, it's really difficult to see on this. What's, what's the scale along the bottom? Are those kind of like objects? These are all the activities and, and uh, resources in the course. So it could just be a document that was posted? Right. Uh, or it could be an actual uh, Dropbox assignment? A quiz or an assignment, yeah, something like that. That's what it could be. And so 
And there are other, other reports. I just ran this one just to give you an example of what, what it looks like. And, and the interface is basically the same. But so just to use one of the ones that you said is that project plugged into your Google? Correct. Yeah, and it's, it's available for just the faculty now. So this is a tool that the faculty can use to identify those students that may not be performing as well as they should be, and then they can determine the action on it. Not, not that I'm aware of. It's, it's been um, developed by Moodle users, Moodle community users. Um, here's another one. This is the individual learning plan, which was the one that's very similar to um, the Signals program that's developed by uh, University of London, yeah. And I wish I could go through and show you all the different options. Well, and I, I have another screen here, and I'll show you. But this is what the student would see. And you can modify what you have here. They, had, uh, they wanted the students to see their attendance and, and their assessment. And, and they had some sort of learning styles evaluation, too, that they had part of that, which we don't have as part of our Moodle system. But that can be modified and determine what you want them to see as far as their activity, too. And then there's a plan of action that you have and you can set up and information that you may submit to them to say, hey, you know what, I notice you're not performing well in a certain area. This is what I want you to do to, to act on that. And so let me go to the next one here, which will give you an idea as far as what that report looks like as, from an instructor's view. So I have the student, and then I can determine to turn that status to red, yellow, green, whatever I want to determine what their status is. And then I, I may have targets to help them deal with some of the, the issues or problems that they're having. And then they can respond to that and uh, determine whether or not that target has been addressed. There's progress reviews and there's all sorts of other different communication factors that you can add in. You don't have to use all these. They're, these are things that you can turn on and I've kind of turned them all on so that you can see what it looks like. And then I can go to the individual personal learning planning for that student so that I know what the student is seeing in their page too uh, to determine what they're doing. And then subject reports um, is interesting too. I, I was hoping it would do more than what it's doing. What it's doing right now is basically showing what courses the students are in outside of your course. So it gives you a list of courses. Um, so, just current, just that semester's courses. So, kind of a neat tool. I, there's some tweaking we need to do with it to uh, get it set up so that we can have faculty start using it. But I, I think this is going to be really embedded into what I'm doing as my research and, uh, and having a, a faculty use it, getting feedback from them feedback from the students to see how it helped them and, and doing similar things to what the uh, Signals program is doing, but using this particular tool. So I'm curious about how many, um, uh, how many times the student gets around there and who sets the standard? Is the instructor set the standard? Yes, the, in this case, the instructor does. Yeah, they determine that. And I think that has to be determined by the instructor and the student. OK, that's really all I have. I wanted to, wondering what time it is. Where are you talking about? It's at ISU. Oh. Yeah. What are you doing? Uh, it's, well, no, it's higher education leadership. But uh, it has, a, obviously, a major technology component to it. Yeah. Okay, definitely, definitely, and it may, it may change a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it looks, it looks like Purdue's team was SunGuard, so you can buy signals. You know, is that through SunGuard? If you're a banner school, and, and okay. SunGuard is going to sell it for them. Yeah, they, they developed it, but they had help with SunGuard, so that's it. And Stephen, do you know, was it the University of...
So they basically individualize the, the learning. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, that reminds me of all oh, it's like chemistry, math courses for it's primarily for K twelve, but they get some higher ed, but it's, it's the same idea, it identifies which outcomes you are not mastering and and it redirects you to be assessed and covered more on the subjective. Mm -hmm. Our the learning management system BYI was using using brain hunting. We can have some customized paths. Um, the UI doesn't so far so much, but we can build on to it. Um, uh, but yeah, so like if you if you master quickly an outcome, it, it pretty much exempts you from all those assignments because you've already mastered the outcome. It's mm -hmm. a pretest type of thing, and yeah. so then it just tells you. All right, so it kind of determines all your prerequisites for for yeah. that. Okay. Hmm. Well, I mean, it sounds like an application. Yeah, there's a, a lesson module that will do a lot of that. The angel has this adaptive recovery use of blackboard's terminology. Right. Ultimately, you'd want to integrate it to all your systems. I mean, at the institutional level, you know, instructor level, student level. I mean, oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, and it it really has to be planned well too, because if there's a course of action, are there resources that are in our campus? To support that. Yeah. So, Brandy, are you going in that direction? It's almost like everything you've looked at that has been really like a, a student support or a faculty support, and not necessarily, you know, the student services side of it. Right. They might want to know where students might be. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I think they would too. I, but I'm I'm taking more of the faculty and and student perspective to say. Um, so yeah, there's, I. I there's quite a bit of research that's out there. The problem is that it's so segmented that, that there just needs to be more of it. And I think uh, more and more of these type of programs or even additions to these programs can be made to make it work well with our institutions based on the type of LMS we're using, the type of uh, you know, enterprise system that we're using, and, and uh, so on. And so it's, it's an exciting time. I just I think it's time that we we start on it now. I don't think it's a four to five year thing down the road. I think we we already have the data. We need to determine what we want to do with it. We got to get going. Exactly, and it's a huge issue. Well, yeah, and that kind of gets to the kind of the politics of this, right? Because uh, faculty don't necessarily see retention as being their responsibility, and for the support services do see that as being the responsibility, and yet they may not really have access to the data that gives them the ability to assess that. Mm -hmm. my academic freedom. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, yeah. 
So I'd be interested, you know, I, I, I can certainly agree with the approach then, let's give faculty these tools. And, uh, but I can then also see some faculty saying, well, wait a minute. I don't really want to start using this tool because after a while you're going to start mining that information and share it with other organizations. You know, because of course that would be the next step. Once faculty start using a stoplight sort of approach and giving people red and yellow lights, well sure you'd want to have other offices aware of that in the middle of the term. Uh, but yeah, faculty would say, well wait a minute, no, that's my information, my communication to students. Yeah, that's part of the teaching. Yeah, interesting. Well, I would think that it would improve their evaluation some, too. What are you saying? Does that even bother on campus or course evaluations? I would think so. We, we don't even have, aren't, aren't even required. Fact, oh, really? We don't even have to deliver student evaluations if, they're, if they have tenure. Wow. Oh, really? <laughs> hmm. Well, food for thought. So is this going to be a full PhD program for you? <sighs> Let's see. <laughs> You're eight years into it now, aren't you? Well, I, I started, no, I started in uh, 2007, I think. Okay. So Second I'm day. done with coursework, done with my comps, on to my, on my full proposal right now, so. But, uh, Pretty exciting. I, I was, you know, I was focusing more on that, the uh, social networking aspect of things, and then uh, got talked out of it by, by, by my advisor, and to look more at. That's a good person you talked out by, though. <laughs> exactly. That's kind of their job. Exactly. Good thing you listen. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Randy.